Peace be with you. Welcome to another edition of Let the Quran Speak. My name is Sophia. I'm your host. Now, Jesus is often, is often mentioned in reference to other religious traditions, and we'll be looking today at what the Islamic tradition has to say about Jesus. What do Muslims believe about Jesus? We'll be looking at that later in the show. We'll also be taking a look at a chapter of the Quran, a short chapter called The Opening, or Al-Fatiha. We'll begin with that chapter. With me is Brother Shabir Ali from the Islamic Information Center. Brother Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. My pleasure, as usual. The verse that we're dealing with, or the chapter that we're dealing with, is Al-Fatiha. It's often, it has many different, there are many different ways of referring to this chapter. Maybe you can begin by telling us what are some of the different names. Yeah, it, uh, it is called Al-Fatih, which means the opening. It's called Umm al-Quran, the mother of the Quran. Uh, it, it is called Al-Fatih because obviously you opens the book, you open the book and there it is. It is the opening chapter. And uh, it is called Umm al-Quran because it's, uh, or mother of the Quran, because mm -hmm. in, in, in a way, it encapsulates uh, within its seven verses the message of the entire Quran. So can you tell me the message then, or what the verses actually say? Well, in, in short, the, the verses uh, show a relationship between uh, human beings and God. Okay. It, it, the passages begin by saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of God, the Beneficent, the Merciful One. Uh, praise be to God, uh, the Lord of the worlds. Uh, the Beneficent, the Merciful One, Master of the Day of Judgment. And then it goes into a prayer. You, you alone uh, we worship and your aid we seek. Uh, show us the straight path, uh, the path of those whom you have favored, not the path of those who have earned your anger, uh, nor of those who go astray. So, so what are the themes then that you're, you've mentioned that sort of encapsulates the, the message of Islam then? Well, think about the statement, Master of the Day of Judgment. That's one of the central themes in Islam in that it uh, reflects on the whole question of human responsibility. Okay. Uh, we do actions here, we live a short life, and then we go back to face judgment uh, in, in the judgment court of God on the Day of Judgment. So that's a central concept. Uh, think of the verses that uh, start off the chapter, the verses that praise God and, and uh, declare Him as the universal Lord. Uh, and uh, think also of the uh, passage, you alone we worship. Well, these are all, again, uh, central ideas in the religion of Islam, the idea of monotheism. There is only one God, and we worship him alone. We turn away from all other deities or objects of worship, and we declare that there is none worthy of worship but uh, the one true universal God. Now, he's not just simply the God of the Muslims, but he is the universal Lord. He is Lord of everything. Mm -hmm. he is the, 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 the Quran uses the term worlds here in the plural. He is the Lord of the worlds. So it's, uh, what, uh, however you can conceive of world, uh, uh, God is the Lord of all, all of those. And then the notion that God guides and that w w human beings are to turn to God seeking his guidance. Yes, and that too reflects on a central theme of the Islamic faith, the idea that God communicates with his creatures and uh, gives us messages from heaven. The messages usually uh, come in their most clear and direct form uh, through the uh, medium of prophets. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we ask God for some communication from Him, some guidance, some way of showing us the right path. Guidance can come by some personal inspiration as well. A person is somehow guided to make the right choices in, in life. Muslims seek the guidance of God on a personal level through prayer and devotion, through special prayers called istikhara, asking for God's guidance in, in choosing between alternatives, especially puzzling alternatives, both of which may appear to be permissible for a Muslim, and yet one does not know which is the most beneficial outcome. Uh, guidance is also to be sought uh, at the level of just simply uh, having our spiritual GPS uh, pointed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we know the way to heaven, for example? We are here in, in this uh, life for a short time, what happens after we die? Where do we go? So one needs the guidance in, in life to make sure that the path we are following here is actually leading to the desired ultimate destination uh, of life with God. There is a, actually a renowned account of uh, God, God describing what happens when, a servant, uh, when, when his servant recites. Um, Al-Fatiha, and sort of the, it sort of encapsulates the relationship between God and the servants. It's, you're, you're almost in conversation 
Can you maybe speak about that? Yeah, the, the, the hadith says that when it, the servant recites this passage by saying, for example, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, which means praise be to God, the Lord of the worlds, God responds by saying, Hamid Ani Abdi, uh, my servant has praised me. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the servant continues to recite uh, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, uh, the, the beneficent, the merciful one, uh, God responds by saying, Athna alayya abdi, my servant has glorified me, and, and so on. So it, it continues until the person uh, says, uh, abudu wa You alone we worship and your aid we seek. God says, uh, salata bayni wa bayna abdi nisfain. I have divided the prayer between myself and my servant into two halves. And the two halves actually are broken right in the middle of this statement because the, the, there is first a mention of worshipping God and then there is a mention of seeking his guidance. Mm -hmm. so you alone do we worship and you alone do we ask for help. That's right. Guidance. So the asking for help, that's where the uh, chapter turns in the middle. Uh, mm -hmm. rather than, uh, the first uh, uh, section was focused on God and now the second section is focused on the needs of human beings. Uh, the more specifically the need for guidance from from God mm -hmm. and so God says now whatever my servant asks for I will give him okay so what is God trying to do in in, in this account well the, the uh, what the servant is going to ask for obviously and, and most pertinently is the guidance from God we have many needs in life and we can uh, ask God to look after all of our needs material and spiritual but the greatest need is spiritual and among the spiritual needs the guidance from god ranks supreme because without guidance we we will continue to displease god let's say a person is asking god for forgiveness for sins but then the next moment he goes and commits more sins but if he has the guidance from god then he knows not to commit sin and he knows that if he actually does happen to commit sin well then he, he knows how to repent so the guidance is all encompassing and uh, we can see why this chapter focuses on the guidance and uh, the believer in this, pr uh, in this prayer specifies what guidance he or she is seeking it is the guidance and the path followed by the people of old who have been in God's pleasure and it is definitely not the path of those who have earned God's displeasure or anger. How many times is this verse, is this chapter recited per day? Uh, the, the devout worshipper will uh, pray at least 17 cycles of prayer mm -hmm. in a day and night and uh, in each one of the cycles this prayer will be recited so at least 17 times wow. per day. So hopefully that message is actually being inculcated within a person and not actually just recited. I would certainly hope so. All right thank you for that. You're welcome. When we return we will talk about Jesus.